November 6th, 2015 Friday. では、最後に、神聖の町渋谷のますますの発展を願い、開催の言葉とさせていただきます。皆様、ご協力のほど、よろしくお願いいたします。Well, I guess this is it, huh? November 6th, 2015, 9am, the second Shibuya Peace and Restoration Festival had begun. The people gathered in front of the Ikerivo began to loudly applaud and the major finished his speech. Then they started to split off to visit the concerts and stalls that they wanted to go see. Over 80% of the people here were from outside Shibuya. I wonder if that is significant. Many were from Tokyo, but others had come all the way from outside the country to witness the celebration. By easily more than 100,000 people in attendance, the first festival was held last year to celebrate the 5th anniversary of the reconstruction and the whole world had come out to celebrate. A similar event had been done a year after the disaster, but it had been less of a festival and more of a memorial. The rebuilding work was proceeding at a feverish pitch. But at that point, it was still too early to call it a city reborn. But last year, even though there were still areas that were covered in rubble, fifth year anniversary, and the prospect of the tax revenue that would come along with it. Fair enough. Get the government to hold a festival for the whole world. Despite being only a one day event, it had attracted over 80,000 people and worldwide attention. It was such a big success that for this year, the city had put even more effort into it. The concerts were bigger, and there were more places to eat and drink. I guess that's what that bastard is after. If this event gets worldwide attention, then Takuru's death, or amputation suicide, will definitely attract the committee's attention. The main areas were centered around the Rikaribo building. As well as the Shibuya Cultural Hall, Shibuya 107, and Shibuya City, Sign City. All the main roads around the station were closed to any traffic that wasn't bringing in people or equipment to the festival. Nukemura Street and Dongazaka Street in particular were overflowing with performers and stalls. The reporter with Tokyo Next TV saw the cameraman nod and then looked at the scene in front of her. This whole thing was stupid, and she could tell she was getting tired. Center Street, one of Shibuya's busiest shopping districts, or streets, I should say. This street always had a lot of young people to begin with, and now with the festival. It was covered with stalls to visit, and filled with people of all ages. When she'd been given the job of reporting on the Shibuya Reconstruction Festival several months ago, she had literally jumped for joy. The reason why she was so excited was that the vocalists were one of her favorite bands. Takayanaki Momone has come to be performing on stage. Ever since she's happened to hear Takana La words Takana Takayanaki reading his heart a voice at the concert hall, she had been a fan. Or perhaps 
I did a good believe her. The name sounds familiar. Was she the victim of the leaky noise case? She was willing to do whatever it took to get a camera to a performance at the Restoration Festival so that the whole world could see how wonderful she was. But. He'd been caught up in the return of the new generation madness and murdered. Now that there was barely any point in covering the Restoration Festival anymore. But she still had to smile and obey when the boss told her to come here. And in the end... He'd wanted to believe that the big TV station would be better than this. What she was doing was a little better than rubbernecking. Oh, the cameraman pointed at a group of people wearing homemade t-shirts. The shirts had a white print background with a photo on the front and a big red question mark that covered the photo. They were all young, like all the others he had interviewed so far. <sighs> he covered her annoyance with the same smile she used to deal the obnoxious boss, then she pushed through the crowd and got close to the group. Seriously? Similar stickers on clothes and on signs. Who cares? She thought to herself, but she told them she was with Tokyo next. Kore siya, kore. She pulled on the t-shirt to show her. The photo in the center was of two fat male faces. The sumo sticker. Terrible, kite ro ってことはやっぱマジなんすか？スイポの情報。え、なんですかそれ？ He played dumb and acted surprised. She certainly couldn't tell them that she had come here because of a rumor on Twipo, especially one that was almost certainly a lie. Miyashiro ga koko de jisatsu suru te uwasa ga nagare ten su yo. She knew about it. Before dawn, it was supposed to happen in front of the big TVs, and a few hours ago, it was next to the statue of Hachi in front of the station. Miyashiro te. あの指名手配になっている宮代拓くんですか？あ、画像ありますよ。He started to fiddle with his smartphone, seemingly oblivious to the fact that she hadn't asked to see it. It was the same picture. Me and Shiro attacked her that she was already sick of seeing, according to her boss. It was from a student notebook. Eh? How do you keep such things? Have you not seen it on the internet? Everyone has it. We are really looking for a pension fund. Oh, the rewards? Come to think of it, there was a fake rumor about that going around. その T シャツはご自分で作られたんですか？まさか、さっき三百円で買ったんすよ。超絶ダサいっしょ。ネタネタ。And then they all started to laugh. Though she didn't get the joke, could feel herself getting more aggravated. It seems similar T-shirts and. The guards and even some that were declaring Yashiro Taku a god and glorifying the sumo stickers. Some of them were being sold as part of a movement to get rid of the sumo stickers so people could focus on the festival, but most people were just wearing them to be a part of the chaos. Of course, this was the first time she'd seen anyone who actually believed in the reward. 
宮代拓くんについてどう思いますか調子こいてますね連続殺人しかも同じ施設のやつもでしょ何やってもいいと思ってんすよこいつこいつのこと神とか言ってるオタク連中マジキモくないっすか俺らそういうの許せないんすよ But everyone seemed to think that Miyashi Otakuru was the killer. At least everyone who'd come to the festival to find him seemed to think so. And they were probably right. The official announcement just said that he was wanted as a person of interest. But if he wasn't the killer, he wouldn't have used his real name. And she'd also heard that they were, in fact, looking for him as a suspect. She didn't know where the information had come from. Miyashiro Takuru, new generation of Kyoki no Sairai no Hanyu. She suddenly felt a rage building inside her. There was no way she could do what she originally set out to do now. The angel of the heavenly voice was dead. But if there was one reason to participate in this festival, If he wanted to kill himself in public, he was probably some kind of sick madman. If he pulled it off, even more idiots might start worshipping him. And that was probably just what he wanted. He wouldn't let that happen. I wouldn't atone for her murder at all. He deserved a miserable, painful death. Probably with people throwing rocks at him, like an old historical drama. Just, how did you do it? Ah. Only then did she realize that the people in front of her had stopped talking. She said thank you. I'm going to go find another person to interview. So da. Sorry. Last one. Last one. Last one. She suddenly stopped and asked the group one last question. As she thought of before, they disappeared into the crowd. Today, which one? From Saitama. I came to Charlie. And they left again, but she still didn't get the joke. This time she turned around without thanking them and walked off into the busy street. He could tell the cameraman looked confused. He didn't seem to understand the meaning of their question. If they were from Saitama, that meant they weren't from Shibuya. And from the look of it, they weren't victims of the disaster. People who had nothing to do with the Shibuya earthquake were here looking for Miyashiro. So were the victims of the earthquake she just interviewed a while ago. We were hoping the Restoration Festival would be a success. And so were the people with the grudge to bear against him, like her. Our thoughts were never going to be heard on TV. The people nearby couldn't hear them either, but they were shared by the vast majority of the people at the Restoration Festival. Whenever she saw someone wearing a sumo sticker on their clothes, she figured they were after Miyashiro, and when she went to interview them, she found that she was right. But in fact, the news that Miyashiro was going to kill himself in front of the crowd I've been playing on TV every hour since last night. And because of that, over 98% of the people at the Restoration Festival heard it. There was literally no place safe for him in the city. It's a good place to be. 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 It's a good place to be.
The words make me sick, so I turned off the TV. I realized that the skin on the soles of my feet was starting to rub off. And then clenched my toes. It felt like if I didn't keep some part of my body tensed up, I would scream and start smashing things. I'd always hated outsiders who never cared about the actual people caught up in something, but this time it was different. Damn it, you don't know anything, you don't understand anything, and if you don't know anything, then you need to keep your mouth shut. I wasn't the one who killed Nono or Yui. Tark had been sitting in a chair, barely moving. He seemed to be staring at a spot on the wall, just waiting for time to pass. Ano, Takuru-san. Oi, koko e kisha dame daro. I suddenly shut my mouth. Yuki and Kazuki were both looking at Sarika. Their hands were shaking. Either with fear or suppressed rage, or maybe both. Shinjo-san and Yuto. Shinjo-san is now calling me. Yuto-kun is drinking tea and is sleeping in my room. That's right. I was glad he was asleep. If he saw the person who killed his sisters, probably couldn't take it. He was still just in elementary school. <laughs> the two of them stared at Sarika, unmoving. Sarika didn't move either, but. At some point, Sarika turned away from the wall to look at them. クルスのの殺したのは私だよ。山添うき、かずきはな。エクスプレッションズチェンジ。ラカムズフラタルツ。Sarika's voice was calm, but Uki's was small and shaking. Sarika's I suddenly realized why Yuki wouldn't back down. Yuki didn't know about that yet. I didn't have the time to tell her and... Yuki was a father of Yuki. Yuki was extremely shy, and it was Nono and Dad who had given her a place here, as he'd always found her meaning in life in helping others, the doctors, and the people she really looked up to. Yamazoe Uki, you are not listening to anything. I jumped out of my chair. You were in the past of the Sakuma. It was probably six years ago. Yuki stared at the wall for the first time. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Well, I don't think it's possible to say that Sakuma is... So, stop it! I 
Ada screamed. I held over my power without even thinking about it. I slammed her off a chair and onto the floor. And then I walked over and grabbed her by the hair. I've never been this violent with a girl before. I could hear Uki and Kazuki gasping at the change in me. I grabbed her by the hair to make her look at me straight in the eye. いい加減にしろよ、お前。これ以上大切な家族の心を壊すな。I looked at her, mustering all the rage I could find in my mind. She should be able to tell how mad I was. Erica must have felt my anger. Maybe it hurt when I grabbed her hair, because her face twisted a little in pain. I looked back and saw Uki staring at Sarika with white eyes. Asuki looked sad too. I looked back and saw Uki staring at Sarika with <laughs> I let go of Sarika's hair. She ran her hand towards violently to try and get it back into place. Ano, Takuru-san, Sensei, wa do you stand this ka? Ima, toko ni irun this ka? Sore ni. Shinjo-san,が突然荷物をまとめろって。それと何か関係あるんですか？それは。There were tears in Yuki's eyes, but I couldn't bring myself to tell her the truth. Erika <laughs> stood up, and then. She grabbed her stomach again for some reason. There was blood on her hands. Come to think of it, her wound locked it had opened when I'd used my powers on her at Frisia. <laughs> Damn it! I turned to Uki. Oh, looked like she was on the verge of breaking down in tears. Atode, Kanarzu Hanaskara. Imawa, Iwareta Dorini, Nimotsu, Matometekre, Uki. Temo. Uki looked like she wanted to ask more questions, but Kaski grabbed her hand firmly and shook her head. And then she pushed her gently on the shoulder and let her outside the room. I said things in my mind for Kazuki's kindness. And as soon as I heard the two of them start to quietly pack up in Yuki's room, I invited Sarika downstairs. Uh -huh.